Usher, our business editor Stephen Carroll, joins us here on set with more, Stephen. BNP Paribas is the largest bank in the Eurozone. Its business in Russia is relatively small, but the bank now says that its Russian subsidiary won't be handling any transactions from the end of March, suspending all new projects in the country. This decision will affect its other businesses in Russia as well, which include a car leasing operation and an insurance unit. The bank's been scaling back its business in Russia for a decade, having already closed its retail bank and loan operations. But the decision is still symbolic and puts a focus on the other European lenders who are still operating there. The, Europe the EU bank with the largest exposure to Russia is Raiffeisen Bank uh, International, the Austrian lender, almost €23 billion Euros worth at the end of last year. France's Société Générale comes in second with almost 19 uh, billion euros worth. That's mainly through its unit Rosbank, which has 12,000 employees in Russia. Italy's Unicredit, also a major player. Uh, it says it's considering quitting the country now, though. RBI has made similar moves. Sockgen, meanwhile, says that it will be continue. It would be able to absorb the cost if its Russian arm was nationalised. But compared to those, BMP, a relatively uh, small player. Let's turn next to Ukraine and its agriculture industry. The country's a major food producer, particularly when it comes to wheat and sunflower oil. The Russian invasion has sparked fears for global supplies of those foodstuffs. Despite the fighting, many farmers have stayed put and continued to work the land. Liam McGuinn has more. In Ukraine, not everyone is fleeing or fighting. These farmers have stayed put to do their job, just as their president asked them to. People who work in the agricultural sector, such as veterinarians or people who are involved in the next seedlings, the army will not mobilize them. These people are exempt for six months. A hundred kilometers from the fighting, this farm operates as normal. And it is vital for Ukraine that it continues to do so. Without farmers like Sergei, the country would go hungry. The military have their battle. Farmers also have theirs. We must feed our soldiers and our Ukrainian nation. Farmers all over Ukraine are facing huge difficulties. They have seen delayed seed deliveries and shortages of fuel. But above all, it is proving impossible to sell on their stock. We have almost 500 tonnes of corn behind me. We have a lot of problems. The seaports that allow us to export are closed. No transactions take place. We don't sell our grain. With many ports blocked by Russian forces and others ceasing operations due to fighting, Ukraine currently cannot export any of its goods. Ukraine was one of the world's biggest exporters of wheat, and with no sales possible for the foreseeable future, one of the country's largest sources of profit has disappeared. Let's take a look at what's happening on the stock markets for you next. We had the head of America's central bank hinting at his openness to a bigger interest rate hike in May, that's giving investors food for thought. European markets starting the day pretty flat. Banks and oil companies among those seeing gains at the open of European trading. In Asia, Japanese exporting companies were boosted by the stronger dollar. The Nikkei in Tokyo closing up 1.5%. Uh, Hong Kong's shares were trading pretty flat earlier, but they've picked up in the afternoon session up 3%. Uh, there are just some smaller gains in Shanghai and on the Kospi in Seoul, we are keeping an eye on shares in China Eastern Airlines. After that crash yesterday, they're down around 6% in trading today. Oil prices creeping up again today, though, after the prospect that the European Union could ban the import of Russian oil. Brent crude trading uh, just under $118 a barrel, gains too on WTI as well. The troubled Chinese property developer Evergrande says it won't be able to publish its annual results next week as planned because it hasn't completed its audit. The shares have been suspended from trading until then. That's in line with the Hong Kong stock market's rules. Evergrande is the world's most indebted property developer. It currently has around $20 billion worth of bonds that are deemed to be in default. And finally for me, Apple's services are back up and running after an outage that lasted several hours on Monday. More than a dozen services, including the App Store, iCloud and Apple Music, were affected. There were reports that Apple's internal networks were hit too. Outages this time outages of this kind, pretty rare for Apple, but they did last long enough, Stuart, that people had time to complain about it on social media, which is our favourite thing about all internet outages, really, <laughs> how people cope without these essential services. It's the most important, isn't it, Stephen? <laughs> Thanks for updating us on it. Stephen Carroll with Business.